Hello again, Pastor Deborah, and we are entering into a new series. This is still mental health and the forever person, the three realms. We finished up the first two realms, the physical body and the soul. Now we're going to enter into the third realm, the realm of the unseen, the realm of the forever person. Let's get started. This is episode one of the forever person, the three realms. What is the forever person? Is it a real person? What do you mean forever? Well, the word forever means eternal, always to live. It is a person. It really has no itself. It really has no gender. But it can take on male, female, animal. It can take on any shape and form that its soul believes it is. It has power to, well, they call them shapeshifters. But the forever person is that third part of us, of a human, that upon earthly death leaves the body. And everybody's hoping that it goes someplace up. And some guy named Peter opens the gates and we come in. Nobody really wants to go down to what they call purgatory or hell. Mm -mm. Even the Islamic people, they're trying to get up to paradise. That's where the forever person lives. He lives in a realm that's unseen by natural eyes. But the, the unseen realm has always been here. It was here before the earth was even created. It's all around us as Neil Anderson found out in the matrix. It's a world that you don't know about. Can't see, but you always, everybody's moving in it. Everybody knows about it, but they don't talk about it. Everybody's spirit, the forever person, moves. I moved when I was four. I was having my tonsils out. And I had the vision of seeing my body laying on a table in a military hospital and me running down the hallway. Didn't know what it was. But my forever person, my spirit, became frightened and it left the body. I'm sure I was under anesthesia and at that time they had something called ether. For many, 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 many years I couldn't eat overripe cantaloupe because the smell reminded me of that ether. I'm sure I left my body, had dreams and visions, but didn't know it, and I had no teaching on it. But the forever person, a lot of people have discovered it when they have near-death experiences, and they sort of leave their body, and they go into a realm they don't know anything about. Some go up and see family and are told, it's not your time, go back. Some just hang out in the top of the ceiling of the emergency room while they watch the doctors work on their bodies. One of the great movies to kind of help you understand that is Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Now, most human spirits do not hang around on planet Earth like Patrick Swayze did. But it gives you an idea of that realm uh, that is there. And it's a great movie to watch if you don't believe in it. And God has used many a movies to help us. <clears throat> Some of the movies that will also help you are all the Alice in Wonderlands. When you go into some strange holes, you end up with strange characters. Uh, how about the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Go through a closet, you end up in another world. Strange stuff happens. All the Walt Disney movies, you had singing flowers and all kinds of stuff. God has always been trying to help us to understand that realm. But in that realm, there is good and bad, <clears throat> unseen to us, trying to hurt us or trying to love us. And the forever person, though, uh, he's usually stuck in the mud, so to speak. He's in the flesh, and uh, he's hiding. But he is affected by whatever happens to the physical body and to his soul. He feels the emotions. But he also lives in that world back here that the soul does not live in. 
is an unseen spiritual world. And it's a busy place. Everybody's moving in it. Saved, unsaved. Every Islamic, everybody, children, everybody. They're all moving. <clears throat> and what happens is that realm where the forever person lives, you have to study it. It's not a frightening world. Uh, it can be because there's bad stuff in it and bad things. And people that are in it, some of them, a lot of them are bad too. And what happens to them, and I'll tell you a story, what did help me, is I was on this team in a church revival called the Deliverance Team. And that kind of upset some people, so they changed it to the Personal Ministry Team. And there was a young girl in the church during sanctuary time, praise and worship, and she was in a wheelchair. She had Tourette's uh, syndrome, I think. And she'd start flailing her arms and stuff when certain songs came. Very distracting, so they took her out, brought her to the women's restroom with her mother. They were both from Germany, and they, no, they did not speak any English. And they would call me to pray with her to speak peace, to calm her down. So when I got there, she's laying on the sofa, and I look in her eyes, and here's what opened up to me, what was going on in the spirit realm. Her little spirit was running. She was a little girl. She was running from some kind of baboon-looking creature, demonic, was chasing her. Now, while that was happening, she was laying calm. She was running spiritually. Then it caught her and started raping her, biting her, tearing at her. When that occurred, her arms started flailing. And the Holy Spirit said to me, that is what's going to be like in hell if you don't help people to find me. I prayed peace, bound it up, and left. Valuable lesson. Another lesson to help me learn about that world, I had to study the occult and witchcraft. They do believe in it, and they move in it was I had an invitation by a satanic high priest, his name was Victor, to meet him. Uh, he would come up from Orlando, he doesn't live there anymore. He was a, had American Indian in him and he was in the mafia and he was a very vicious man. He wanted to meet me spiritually. So he'd sent his daughter into the church service and what happened was I was to go out and sit on some steps with this little nine-year-old girl her name. I can't remember what it was. I do, but I don't want to say what it is because she's still a young woman now. And there's lots of victors out there. And uh, so I was to sit next to her, but her father would come through her to talk to me. And I'm going, now wait a minute. We have two physical bodies, me and this little nine-year-old, but three human spirits. And I had to pray that my eyes would not look at the flesh and only see the spirit then i'd have another young girl her name was amanda she's a precious girl letter to the lord she's still my spiritual daughter i think she's out west somewhere right now and she used to be grand central station she would was allowed because in satanism the females some are allowed to go into churches and sort of meet with the people and she would have thousands of human spirits coming into her body, looking through her eyes, listening with her ears, but they wouldn't physically be there. Now this was kind of new to me at the time, but I read enough stories, and one of the great books that helped me to understand this was He Came to Set the Captives Free by Rebecca Brown. Let me see if I got it. this one help me to open up the spirit world to me great book true story it's about a young lady who was going was a nurse decided to become a doctor and how she got hooked up with a witch named Elaine that's not a real name and how God asked her a question whether she would uh, choose to go and be a cancer doctor and he'd bless her or did you want to know more about him, see some of his power and demonstrations? And the only way she could do that was to help him to get witches and uh, the cult people out of occultism, out of Satanism. But it would cost her her life, 
all of her family, pets, dogs, her job, her reputation. But she would get to see great power and see him more than the other way. So she decided she wanted to see more of him. So they met and uh, Elaine met and they started ministering. It was rough. So I learned a lot from her about that spirit realm. She explained a lot of things. Elaine did a lot of talking. Rebecca didn't know nothing like I felt. So she was a great mentor. I think she's still alive somewhere here in the United States. But the forever person, that is what the cross paid for. That is what Jesus Christ went there to pay for. That is what blood was shed for so that the spirit person can be reconnected back to the Father up in heaven. Now in every religion, we're dealing with the forever person. We're dealing with spiritual beliefs. We're dealing with gods, goddesses. We're dealing with in Islam, paradise and Allah. We are dealing in the spirit realm with spiritual beings trying to help us spiritually. The forever person. Humanity has a history from the very first days of being in contact with the spirit realm, contacting the spirits, believing the spirits in mankind were to be connected and have a relationship. Now, a great story I just watched. It's a three-hour movie about the Iliad and the journey of the guy that never came home for 20 years. And what happened was he got called by the Oh, gosh, I can't remember these people's names. Uh, when it was about Troy and Helen of Troy, when she went off with some guy and her rightful husband going to go and fight him, took him 10 years. Well, this guy, I think his name was Percipius, uh, came up with the idea of the Trojan horse. They went in and, you know, they defeated Troy. Well, afterwards, Percipius goes out to you see it in the movie, and he just lifts himself. It's all about me. If it was my idea, we don't need any gods. God, you didn't give me this idea. I did it. I'm the one that got Troy down. I, I, I. We don't need you, gods. Hmm. Poseidon heard that one. And he rose up, big waves in the movie, and said, you ain't never going home until you learn a lesson. That without a god in your life, Man is nothing. So old Precipius tried to say, I'm going home. No God's going to stop me. And boy, did he have some journeys and trips. And he ran into gods all the way. And they tricked him and deceived him. It took him 20 years to get home. And he kept saying, why don't you just kill me? And old Poseidon said, I don't want to kill you. I just want you to suffer. Because until you humble yourself, and you accept the fact that you are nothing without gods in your life. You ain't going home. The forever person is in that realm with old Poseidon. He's in the realm of Mount Olympus. He's in that realm where we don't ever see it. He's the one that's having the near-death experiences. He's the one that comes back and says, I died and went to hell. I went to heaven. The forever person. He's real. He's alive. Comes in the, in the womb. When the heart starts beating, the spirit's there. And in other things you learn, he gets abused. He lives in darkness. He can be sexually abused, trafficked, sold. You can have all kinds of sex. Some people have dreams about having sex. What's going on? They're doing it to the forever person. Horrible nightmares happening to the forever person. Some people have visions and dreams. Okay. Maybe the mental health might think you're hallucinating. But they're in the spirit. Some people hear voices. Mental health says... You got some problems but it's the forever person but also the forever person has a lot of power and the soul part of us that's in the second realm he can use it disassociation 
separation of the soul's mind through the power of the Spirit. Because there's something that's in the Bible that says, as you think in your heart, that's your soul, your subconscious, so you are. So when somebody goes through horrible abuse or trauma in childhood or any time, they just think they somebody else, they create it, done. I just watched it on, I um, think that Joni Aris, she's on TV right now, something about, she's being interviewed and she said, I wasn't there, that wasn't me. People aren't listening. When they say that, that's a multiple personality, a disassociative part, was not there. That was another part. Uh, O.J. Simpson, it was the same way. He said he didn't kill his wife, Nicole. Charlie did. Wasn't him. And people, the uh, policemen are not listening. They're not aware of childhood trauma, disassociation. There was another guy that was a football player. A lot of them disassociate because they have to go into the realm of football and be killers almost. Then go home and be sweet. They have to be different people in different roles. And they've had head injuries and they are different people at different times. The forever person is there. It can happen to him too. The realm of the spirits are eternal, a forever realm. It was here before the earth was ever created. It has lands and trees and castles. It has armies and it ha which called angels. It has things. It has creatures and animals and people and winds and waves, all, words, all kinds of things are in the forever person's realm. There's two kingdoms in that realm, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Darkness means ignorance in Hebrew. The kingdom of light means truth. So there's two kingdoms. You can see it in the yin and the yang, black and white. They work together. They're both here, and they both have government, both have rules and justice, and they have bad people and good people. So the forever person really doesn't know about it. And I just listened to another young lady. She was talking about she started hearing things as a child, seemed to be getting some information about people, and it frightened her parents. I don't want to talk about it. So she didn't. And it frightens people because it's not the earthly realm. But that's a real person. I meet them all the time, spiritually. I see them. They come into the garden with me. That's a spiritual place. <clears throat> they follow me around because that's the realm that's real. This temporary world, we know the dirt body goes back to dust. You can burn up a tree, a house, books, money. It doesn't last. Only the forever person of the spirit lasts. And everything that's in it. And so this is a realm that dealing with mental health, it gets abused. It feels lonely. It gets depressed. It feels suicidal. It can be broken into many, many different parts and programs. It can feel great depression, sadness, joy. It has a mind, it has a heart, it has a body. It's in a realm where there's bad angels, good angels. It has feelings, it has eyes and ears and hands. You may not know that, but it does. It's a person. It's a creature, a being. It has all different looks. It does not have black skin, red skin, yellow skin. <clears throat> Even in the movie The Matrix, when Neo came out of, <clears throat> excuse me, The Matrix and, and sort of got born again, and then he went back into it, his appearance changed. But he also learned that The Matrix had control over him, but it couldn't tell him who it was. He had to learn how to believe 
who he really was, but he had to have mentors in his life. So the same thing is true with the forever person. It must grow and learn and develop. It'll stumble a lot. And how do we teach it? I, I'm able to work in the spirit. I'm able to talk to the spirit through the soul. But I can also talk to the soul, that part of the subconscious. But he doesn't really want you messing with his spirit. Because that stuff, he knows it's there. Doesn't like it. Because that spirit was created to be the king of this three-part system of physical body, subconscious, and spirit. But when uh, uh, one of our ancestors named Adam disobeyed the God and touched a tree and ate something, the spirit lost its crown, its authority, and it fell into the flesh, into the darkness of the soul. And the soul became the head. And then the little spirit just followed it all around. They were one. But the whole system had now been altered. So when we're born in the womb, the soul is already by nature and genes and everything. The one who will be the boss. And it can learn and be shaped and conform some, some good things if it has good parents. But it's still got that rebellious streak in it. And it's still going to look with its eyes, its five senses. And it's going to determine what happens. So the spirit the, the, is there, but it's supposed to be the king and the ruler. And I tell people when I go to the Lakeview Center's Community Mental Health Center, the Acute Stabilization Unit, I teach it this way. There's a war that goes on inside of us. We have a subconscious that has a conscious, a will, a mind, emotions of its own. And it's been shaped by the world, by the earth. It was born into darkness, doesn't know anything of light and good. We have a spirit. Now, if the spirit gets born again and starts learning, like, love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to everybody. Forgive. That spirit then tries to tell the soul, we need to do that. But the soul goes, uh-uh. I want justice. They deserve to pay. I'm mad and angry. And the spirit says, no, we're to forgive. They know not what they do. Now war breaks out in here between these two people. Spirit that's got some new learning. Trying to help his other part of him to also learn it and accept it. But the soul doesn't want it. To him, this is all foolish stuff. So a war goes on and we have physical problems, we have emotional problems, we have mental problems until that war is solved. Now, if the spirit is not growing, not born again, it will go along with the soul. It will not have any conscience to it. It won't remember that this is wrong, so it, they're sort of at peace. It's only when this conflict occurs that a lot of things start happening. So a lot of times people are having spiritual experiences with their forever person. They just don't want to talk about it. They, I had another young, precious young man in the acute stabilization unit told me that his family worshipped Satan through voodoo. And I said, yes, that is a religion, and Satan is a higher power, but he's not the highest. And he said he believed he was under satanic attack because he did not want to worship Satan. I said, yep, probably are. And that spiritual attack can be done by human, other forever persons, demonic spirits of Satan, attacking you. You have become a traitor. We see that all the time. Sometimes what we have to learn, what we see going on in the world, right here, okay, go behind it and look and see. There's warfare. Things are happening back here. 
causing this. So people are having these experiences. If you talk to witches or wiccans, they're worshiping gods and goddesses and earthly things. They're worshiping. That's a spiritual activity. They're in contact with the spirits. If you talk to psychics, the cult, they're in contact with forces, energy vibrations. Okay, the spirit. Okay, they're in contact with it. Some of them see it. You see the auras. Okay, that's not considered weird. But to some people, if you hear the voice of God, you're hallucinating. But that realm is real. And the human spirit knows I'm supposed to be in contact with it. And I need guidance from it and counsel from it. So they seek out psychics and tarot card readers. Or if you're in other countries sometimes, their culture is you go to a shaman, go to a medicine man, go to a voodoo priest. And they try to help you by killing a chicken. Uh, some cultures actually in voodoo, they actually invite the spirits into their bodies. A lot of people want to have spiritual experiences because they feel dead. Because they are, sort of. So they'll go into tents and uh, they will do a lot of things to make that contact. Uh, one of the things a lot of the uh, hippies did in the 60s, they wanted a world of love and peace. But you can't have it down here with the soul and the demonics and the kingdom of darkness. But they tried. It didn't work. They went off into LSD. That didn't work at all. But then when they found Jesus, it's called the Jesus culture or something, uh, and they started going into coffee houses with guitars and long beards, they found what they were looking for inside. So this forever person is inside each one of us. Now, outside of us, there are Things from the kingdom of heaven, angels and powers and force, and the kingdom of darkness. And our forever person is a part of that world. But it's living inside here. And most of the time he is subject to, controlled by the subconscious of the soul. And, um, and confined by the physical body. But when you have near-death experiences, you alter your, do some drugs, uh, you get in very terrifying, abusive situations, trauma, you will leave your body trying to escape. And you will travel. In Satanism, here's how, in multi-generation, here's how they do. is when a little baby is born, uh, they start killing it. Uh, let the heart stop, the spirit will leave, that's a, a law. And then they shock it back. So they get the spirit used to leaving the body. Then they play games going inside of other bodies. And eventually, and I'll tell you the story how it works in their world, which I had to learn about, which you learn about from in here. And you learn about the spiritual strong men that control a spirit, a soul, and a body. You learn how demonics come into people. You learn how they work, how they talk, how people work. Excellent book. And then what happens, uh, Miss Rebecca Brown wrote some other books that really helped. So what happened is this young lady was telling me that her boyfriend, who was a heavy metal music singer, a vampire, bisexual, uh, he had to get some heroin. He was a heroin addict. But he was tall and thin and kind of frightened, so they needed to go in some bad parts of town somewhere and buy some heroin. So what they did, she did was, look, I'll take your spirit out of you. You come inside of me. Then we'll get this Victor guy, who's a very tough mafia guy, to go in you, because he had a tough spirit. Okay, so we have two physical bodies, one male, one female, and we have three spirits. So the two physical bodies go into this neighborhood. Victor, spirit, is inside a, uh, I think his name was Owl, that's not his real name. And this was a story by Amanda that she wrote. And so Victor now talks through the physical body and through the soul of Owl. And he's a tough cookie, so he can deal with the drug dealers and stuff like that. And Owl was spirit, was safe inside Amanda. 
Now this was the kind of world I got dropped into all the time. I'd be on the phone and I'd be talking to one person and I would have millions of people listening or I would have people popping into the conversation like a support group, everybody talking, and they were switching in and out through her. She was like Grand Central Station. And then I had another lady I was working with and demonics and even Satan would come through her and talk. And I had to be very knowledgeable, very sensitive through the gift of discerning of spirits, how to work with the forever person. It's a realm that has everything. Just like what you see out here is a replica, a shadow of the spirit realm. There's books, lights, things, stuff, people, plants, animals, and the spirit world where the forever person lives. There's sex, power, authority, all kinds of things. So in learning how to help people, I had to have that mental health knowledge and I had to have the spiritual knowledge. And I always tell everybody I love my psychiatrist and my therapist because they're working with those two parts of the body, which are very important. We have a system. We have three realms in everybody. We have a physical body that needs attending to, that trauma and abuse affect. We have a soul with a conscious awareness and a subconscious awareness. It needs help. And we have a forever person. Now, being a pastor and having this spiritual training, I can work with the forever person. I'm sensitive to it all the time. Now, I don't activate the gift of discerning of spirits or any of the gifts at any time. It's whenever it's needed, I get them. I'm on call 24-7. Even in my dreams, late at night, early in the morning, in my car, at Walmart, it does not matter. A physical body may be on one row in Walmart or in the vegetable section, and I'm over by the fruits, and they want to talk to me. And I will know there's a physical body there. I may know who it is. I don't talk to the physical body. I don't go over and do anything. I just take care of business in the spirit. And on the way out, I might wave to them, I might not, I might smile, might give them a thumbs up, might never acknowledge the physical body. I'm doing work in the forever realm with the forever person. I had to learn all this. I didn't hear about this when I was growing up. I didn't even really know what witches were or the occult. I had no idea. So in mental health, these two intersect. Because you have a physical body that the psychiatrist is working with. There is brain chemistry. I just listened to a wonderful teaching from Tim Ballard of under Operation Underground Railroad. And he learned that when you serve people and you do good and you give, all the good hormones turn on. And you feel like you're on a high. Feels good get hugs and to give by serving people chemical changes occur but if you have never had that and you have been abused and traumatized bad stuff's going on so the psychiatrist knows a lot of that if he can straighten out the chemical electrical the hormones the brain the conscious and the subconscious can think it can relearn anger management, conflict resolution, learn how to communicate better, learn about relationships, go and get a GED, go and learn how to exercise, can hear the doctor, care about their body. Two important realms, the therapist, the social workers, the marriage and family, the love them all. They are helping to help the soul in the second realm. The subconscious guy, he's hurt. He's been living, he's mad, he's angry, he's depressed. He's holding secrets, he's trying to hold them back. 
He's screwed up, as you would say. He needs help. And those people are trained to help him or her. Now do it through hypnosis, through uh, tons of stuff. But that part of us needs help. Then the forever person. That's where your faith-based communities and faith intersect. That guy needs help. If we can get that guy help, correct, he can grow stronger and help the other two parts of the system. So if we have the psychiatrist and the therapist coming in from the outside and we have the spirit and the faith and the higher power coming in this way, we got all hands on deck. We got everybody working on all three systems to bring unity and peace together. We need the war stopped in here. We need the soul part at peace. We need to change it. It's got some horrible, evil thoughts. It's run by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He's connected deep into the demonic world through the spirit. So I work with the forever person through the realm of faith, through the realm of the spirit. Now most, I can talk to anybody because they're all trying to reach that higher power of their faith. They're trying to get there to help bring some peace to themselves, their family, and their nations. So that is what the forever person, the real being, has got arms and legs, wears clothes, can change. He's in an unseen realm that has laws and justice and weather, kingdoms and lands and cities people and creatures has rules has punishment and justice just like what you see here has governments has nations it has feelings it gets attacked it gets abused by sex it feels lonely and depressed it can be locked down in cages it can be tortured even if the flesh is not. But when the soul and the physical body get abused, because the spirit for a long time is one, everybody gets abused. Everybody is traumatized. Everybody's hurting. And they need every helping profession to help. Now, I'm able to work with all three realms because I had that licensing as a mental health counselor. I've worked with psychiatrists. I understand the biological body, the hormones. Been in substance abuse, working with them. Now a pastor, I understand that realm. They're all important. You need a lot of education in all realms, a lot of support, a lot of knowledge, to be healed and restored and get the right the system in right order the right order is that the forever person rules and reigns the system from the higher powers guidebook from his rules and he tells the soul uh -uh, we ain't gonna do that and the soul goes yes sir yes ma'am and it becomes a proper helpmate and then out through the soul, subconscious, to the physical body. Everybody's in unity. And usually what happens, first, for most of our life, they're all three in unity. But the spirit starts desiring something. It has in it something of eternity, and it's seeking. It's mother. It's father. Don't know what they are. It's like a little bird up at the movie, Are You My Mother by P.D. Eastman. It fell out of its nest. It's going around the whole spirit realm asking, Will you love me? Are you my mother? 
But I don't know what my mother looked like better than looking. I'm looking, searching, searching. Even the soul is searching for pleasure and avoidance of pain. And it says, I don't have any power and I want power. Even if I have to have power over a child. I want money because money has shown me the people here. If I have money, I'm happy. So the soul's trying to satisfy itself, feel better. The spirit's looking, but they're looking in two different realms, but they're all affected. It's a big mess. So my job is to introduce you to this forever person, which is you. The one that's talking to you now is my spirit. And I'm talking to you in the spirit when you watch this. I'm going past your soul, but I am talking to your soul. So I don't disregard any help that anybody gets. Some of it's from the wrong source. It's not that great, but at least you're seeking help, trying to get better, because we got a problem. So this is just episode one to introduce you to the forever person. He actually, like, when I first started, uh, my spirit would look like me. But then if I was dealing with the Indians, it became sort of an Indian princess. And it would change. It was able to change shapes and forms. But really, as I learned more about myself spiritually, I'm just a ball of light. And the best movie that ever showed this to me was an old Star Trek movie that was on television. I haven't been able to find it yet. But it was when it was on TV. And... She, uh, Captain Kirk and the Klingons went down to this planet and they discovered some docile sheepish people that were quiet. They had human forms like Spock and the Klingons. They were never afraid. They weren't worried about the Klingons. They didn't care if anybody died. And the Klingons got mad because they, they wouldn't fight back. They weren't even worth conquering and Kirk was getting mad. Because these people wouldn't fight. They were so sheepish. They didn't really care what was going on. And it frustrated Captain Kirk and the Klingons. Because these people didn't want to fight back. They didn't care. And they couldn't understand what was wrong with these people. And at the end of it, this head guy of the town said, No, we ain't really worried about you guys. We just took on these forms so it would not frighten you. And all of a sudden, the physical body disappeared and nothing but a ball of energy and light sort of hung in the air before them. They were so evolved, they were nothing but light. And they looked at Captain Kirk in their earthly body and they claimed, I said, you guys, you don't frighten us. You don't scare us. You're not even on our level. We are so evolved. We're pure energy. When I saw that years ago, and then I started reading the Christian Bible and hearing stories about gods coming down, taking on forms, disappearing, angels coming down, disappearing, then I recognize that my spirit in this new birth becomes a child of the light, a pure ball of white light that can take on any human form. Christ Jesus did that after his resurrection. People come, they sort of see angels, they disappear. Uh -huh. So Star Trek was trying to show me Something about the earthly world versus the spirit world. And slowly over time, my thoughts and concepts of this forever person were developing, changing. I was learning. You read this book by Rebecca Brown. Still out in the books. You'll learn a lot more about the spirit realm. Now, it's from the bad side. Okay, but it tells you, uh, she talks a lot about the spirit realm, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Excellent. Probably need to go back and read it again. You have to study the forever person. There's plenty of books out there about them. Uh, there's a great big thick book by Watchman Nee called 
the spiritual man. Took me a long time to get through it. It's about this thick. Most people have read it. It talks about the purpose of the soul, the purpose of the physical body, the purpose, the life of the spirit. There are different purposes. There are different uh, dimensions they live in. You must study. And what will help is that you recognize each human has a spirit, a forever person, inside here, inside a dirt body. Even the little babies that are in the womb have one. They all have dirt bodies. We all have a conscious awareness. We have a subconscious. We live in three realms. So your job is to study all three realms, see how they intersect, see what happens since we're in the realm now of the forever person. We'll talk a lot about him or her and the different sicknesses and diseases and attacks that he has. And we'll see if that compares to the soul. They do intersect. They need to be a part of helping each other. So the three parts can come to peace. Thank you very much for this episode one, Mental Health and the Forever Person, the Three Realms. And this begins this series of the Forever Person. Love, Pastor Deborah.